discretion is advised. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to another edition of the New to Wrestling Podcast After Dark. If you're new here, so am I. I am Kelsey. I'm the new in New to Wrestling. This is my best friend and fellow hag, Xavier. <laughs> he is the not so new in New to Wrestling. He is my guide, the one who holds the lantern and shows me the way. Um, we're back. Uh, we're we, back. We've been talking about this for a minute. We knew it was coming. The highly anticipated uh with fear <laughs> and ferocity the mr mcmahon documentary on netflix uh oh, we're gonna Wild. get into it and we're gonna do things a little bit differently tonight we normally will do a whole play-by-play -play of each episode but girl the tea is hot we just xavier and i spur of the moment decided to binge watch the All entire thing in one sitting as i'm sure a lot of you did so you know, we want you to, we're just going to kiki about it. We're just going to talk about it, highlights, moments, just initial first reactions. And if we decide that there's a lot of material here and we might go back and revisit certain episodes and really dive in. But tonight we're just going to chit chat. We're just um, going to chit chat. We're just going to chit chat. And um, we highly encourage you to pause at this time. Go get mm -hmm. yourself a little drink, a little snack. I'm literally eating dinner. We're going to like just hang out. I know Xavier has chips. We're going to like hang out, talk snack hold on, just... hold on. I, i'm gonna open my red bull <gasps> i didn't even hear it oh that's fun i heard it you did okay great maybe it came through but you know sometimes i make like the popping noise with like i do like oh yeah i it hear it and up. you don't yeah mm -hmm. it's so weird so i wonder if it was that but maybe 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 but get your drinks get your snacks get cozy and we're just gonna it's going to be two friends talking about the the absolute madness that was the Mr. McMahon documentary. And please be patient with us. This might be a little bit of a longer one. We're condensing six hours into one conversation, six hours mm -hmm. of content to one conversation. Um, And let's get into it. I was up until three in the morning last night watching this because I got home from work late. Um, And I was texting Xavier and I was like, I know that we try and save some of the stuff for when we get together on the show, but like, some of the stuff literally outraged me. And I was warned and I had to, but I still had to watch. I got spoiled to a lot of mm -hmm. things. Yes, 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 we did. I knew it was <sighs> going to happen. God, yeah. Um, but I knew that this documentary was too uh, of the moment uh, to not watch it. I, I think we had to watch it. So, you know, you win some, you win some battles, you lose some battles, but. We definitely yeah. had to watch this. <laughs> oh, my God. And I it's so funny. Xavier brought up such a good point that just by coincidence and like Xavier's just incredible intuition, like knowing what knowing what to watch. Most of the after darks that we did, like prepared me to see a lot of the behind the scenes of stuff that they covered. Correct. So like things like, you know, the Chris Benoit of it all like the what happened steroid with the trial Hart, the steroid trials yes like we didn't watch the own heart after dark or dark side of the ring episode yet but i knew that that was gonna happen mm -hmm. like it, it i felt weirdly prepared and also um special shout out to my roommate crystal who watched basically the whole she stayed until three in the morning with me she got sucked in at Love somewhere that. around episode three i got and... my roommates to watch the last one with me um because well, I, I had watched most of it before they had gotten home and then mm -hmm. um I was just like, this is crazy. Um, do you want you me to put this to on the big it. TV? Because you are not prepared. <laughs> the tea is crazy. And I will be re-watching, especially the last two episodes, which covers <clears throat> the family and then like the current, a lot of the current stuff that's going on. Right. Because I feel like Got this documentary a... started out very different. Uh, or at least, you know what I mean? It was supposed to be about Mr. McMahon, um, kind of like generally. Um, yes. But I, I feel like because... Um, so during the filming of this documentary, all of the allegations or all of the most recent allegations against uh, Mr. McMahon like came to light. And then he was kind of uh, pushed out of WWE TKO. He's been kind of just reclusing it pretty much since uh, so much so that he declined to actually finish the interviews for this documentary. Right. So. 
Yeah. So if you guys don't know, which I'm sure that you do, but if you don't know, if you're new here like me, the the premise of this, when they open the documentary, it literally says beginning in 2021, over 100 hours of interviews were filmed with Vince McMahon, his family, business associates, and some of WWE's most popular stars. But then, the, like Xavier said, the allegations came out. So this was not intended to be like the expose like, of yes but it almost was because when mm -hmm. you they get into the end and they well they talk to bruce pritchard which i'm sure you guys know that is if you're not new to wrestling a very familiar name to all of you <clears throat> but when they talk to bruce at the end and he's like yeah i watched some of the episodes and this is not like the vince mcmahon documentary i thought it was going to be like this is a, mm -hmm. a witch hunt a blah 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 so it's like i right. feel like the allegations just like lended itself to what it was going to be almost anyway where it's like Mr. Well, McMahon. Not for nothing, but you can't have the history that you have being sued this many times and think that nobody's going to be like, um, can we can we all look at this in one shot? Because seeing it all like back to back to back to back to back to back to back, you're like, wow, wow, yeah. this man is got some issues, got some issues. issues issues and i will say that he told on himself a lot just by what he says how yeah. he says it his relationships with other people not even i'm not even talking about like sexual relationships no, i mean just, just like his friendships his his, friendships. his with his children the relationship he had with his children i think disturbed me the most like really freaked me out but the way like and it was very much the way Shane talked about getting respect from his father. No. The way that that was just a. Cry for help. Well, that, but also exactly what Vince's father did to him. Yes. Just being so withholding of praise, love, pride, whatever, that at 45 years old, this man is throwing himself off of cages and like doing all this crazy like, stuff just to get a, a hug and a pat on the back from his father. So crazy. No, really. And and he so genuinely, the way he was talking about it, like, it was as if, like, there's nothing wrong with that. Right. Like, Crystal and I were like... This is I, not Like, right. it made me emotional. I was like, he literally doesn't understand that this is, like, extremely toxic. Like, right. this is just, like, not a good Situation. thing that you literally are putting... and. I'm going to say something, and this is, like, allegedly, like, how, just the vibe I got was, like, it's almost like he literally didn't care if he lived or died. Like, if he was, like, if I died doing this, then, like, then I'd have my dad's respect, like, for real. Because he was doing such crazy stunts that he didn't even, and when you looked at him when he was about to, like, fall off, like, the top of the cage, and it's, like, however many crazy feet up, and right. he just, like, falls backwards, by the way. Mm -hmm. Like, it's almost like he literally did not care if he lived or died. Like, the yeah. look on his face, so dead. It just really yeah. freaked me out. And I, I, again, new to wrestling, I have not seen any of that yet with Shane and the McMahons. We're, like, mm -hmm. just getting into this that era. If you guys are, like I said, new here, our other show, we're going through Monday Night Raw, and we're in, like, right before the Attitude Eric we are really like, kicks right off. we are in the summer of 97 so yeah we're, and it's we're crazy. about to be in the thick of it yes because triple h was like if you actually watch raw and i was like us you'll notice it was little things over time because people think it was like this one big random switch and suddenly it was the atmosphere it was a lot of little things over time mm -hmm. and we've been saying this like we've right. been watching it and it's like it's all these little like pushing the envelope that one day is like the envelope's just gonna bust open but right um mm -hmm. the literal so i just wrote down some quotes so the episode episode one is called junior one of the things that like literally is such a precursor to this entire thing was vince literally says at one point i wish i could give you some of the real stories holy shit right. and he's they're like no give us one he goes oh no 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 i don't want anyone to really know me Right, which is crazy is? considering you're sitting down to do a documentary about you. And then he goes on to say something along the lines of like, I'll, I'll give you enough to make it interesting. And it's just like, this man is such a control freak uh, in the way that he is presented uh, that like in an like documentary, like interview setting where these people are literally digging up his entire life, he's yep. still 
adamant about I'm in control of the narrative that I'm presenting and nobody else's, which is crazy. He is like a true blue sociopath. Yeah, like nuts. Where he believes, and I I could be mis- mixing up the definition of sociopath with psychopath, but whatever. Um, like where he literally just is like he is in control of his image, and what he does has nothing to do with who he actually is. It's just about his image, like right. how he comes across. Like it doesn't matter what he actually does. It's like I don't know. It's it the just way, it, and so... he goes into it like later about like uh, perception and how like perception yes. is reality um and which is not wrong, untrue but, it's but the, the way, way he goes you... about it is yes. is just crazy and there were this... parts i was just like you you said that you're on camera <laughs> that's what i'm saying he told on himself a lot and he doesn't even realize like we... but um go ahead oh i was gonna say we get very like very brief into Vince's like childhood. All we yeah. really know is that it was bad. Um, really bad. He grew up like apparently really dirt poor. He was apparently physically abused by his stepfather. He never met his real father until the age of 12. Um, and then apparently it was alluded to that he was sexually abused by his mother. So like Which, crazy. We did not find out till in the later episodes. They like right. randomly mentioned. Oh, and there I shit you not and i'm sorry i know we have a trigger warning in the intro but trigger warning there's gonna be sexual assault discussions violence all Mm -hmm. of that but i literally said i I was out loud i was like i just feel like the way that he is the power the control i was like i feel like he's been sexually assaulted like the way that he acts the way that he portrays women on the show the way that he even portrays like men on the show with this like power this like gotta be juice gotta be huge gotta be in control right. whatever i was like i really feel like there's like must be a sexual assault element and then w- later when they were like he was potentially sexually assaulted by his mother right is Crazy. so psychotic and you mm-hmm. see it like play out when when they talk about like the linda and vince of it and they're, it's like this idea in his head where he could like drug the mother figure into being inert and useless. And then right. he is like the domineering, controlling, I'm I'm powerful. I can have sex with whoever I want. I'm having an affair right in front of her. This like sees right. it. It's so like Oedipus complexy. Mm-hmm. Like it's very, very, very twisted. Yeah. And it, it's very twisted. And it, the way that like it, especially like through this lens now looks like he set in motion things on the show to like satisfy those kind of psychological like needs quote yes Um, it's almost like he was acting out like those crazy like therapy things like when people have to do like when they do certain types of therapy and it's like you have to like be it like act out certain like revenge plots in your right. head to like move on it like that's kind of how it felt like this, mm-hmm. literally the world's a stage and i think he says at one point like i was always meant to be a performer i wanted to be a performer i wanted to like act out these right. things happening in my life i mean they all mention several times many times that most of the storylines within the show were influenced by something that happened in real life that they just like turned up the volume on right so again, it's like they kind of told on themselves. It's like they're he's having women like get on their hands and knees and bark like a dog. Like it's I'm like he mm-hmm. there's things you can just see it. Like I I just don't know how anyone could not believe this. Even if you want to say it's a spin, if you want to say they cherry picked, if that you want to say they only there's a lot the of examples of to be cherry picking. Let's just put it that pick- way. This is a a long continued pattern of behavior uh, for them to be wiling out and um, saying that like it was like a crusade or like a witch hunt. And mind you, Vince McMahon, the day before this gets released, puts out a statement basically just being like, oh, like they, you know, through the power of editing, like made me look bad. I'm like, no, dude. You made you look bad. You have no, a history period. that is period. long enough that we can all look back at it now and be like, 
you're not a good person. <laughs> like, yes. I, so. And someone insane. says it at the end, and I know we're like jumping all over the place, but someone but says it right. at the end. It, I think it's Schumacher, Shoemaker, where he says like, you know, two things can be true at once. And we say this all the time. All the time. Two things can be true at once. It's like, yes, did he give us the age of some of the greatest wrestling right. of, of all time? He gave time? us like of the course. greatest circus of all time. But Absolutely. But he like was also the ringmaster. And like, there's a reason like circuses aren't as popular as they used to be because there's a lot right. of like trauma there. But right. um, some other highlights. What do I have from the first episode? Oh, like the whole... Oh, I loved this quote from Tony Atlas. He was like one of the realest people on this show, this episode. He's Tony Atlas, honest. Phil Mushnick. Phil Mushnick, you will always be famous to me, baby. Mm-hmm. You will always be famous to me. Um, um he his name comes up in the uh Stairroad Trial episode, if you guys are curious as to why we're so Oh, about yeah, it. yeah, yeah. When we I love him so much, and we'll get there. But like Tony Atlas says, wrestling is an imitation of the world. If you want to know what America is like, watch wrestling. We show you yourself. Because I guess at this point they were talking about how like foreigners were always the villains. Like they're yeah, and we we discussed that back. We have discussed this, but like the whole thing with the Iron Sheik, like and the conflict in Iran, and like. When they had Sergeant Slaughter turn into... Be like a representative of... So nuts. So nuts. So crazy. I mm-hmm. mean, so crazy. Um, I didn't know that they did this, um, like, talk show thing, mm-hmm. like, with the with Vince McMahon. Um, I already forget what it was called, but that whole talk show thing is so like crazy. I kind of love the concept of it again. Like I'm not trying to praise Vince McMahon. I love the idea of it. I think it's right. funny and I think it's interesting. Um, and I, but think, I didn't you know, know that was like a thing. Wrestling characters lend themselves to that. You know what I mean? It's like, you're basically just giving them the opportunity to do promos in interview form. Yes. And it's at that time was like, I feel like the age of late night, yes. like maybe not quite, but it was like, I mean, late night used to be a huge, like the late, who you watched for late night shows, what you like, Mm -hmm. that was a huge thing. Still is to me. I mean, I still watch Stephen Colbert's monologue every day. Do you? Mm Mm-hmm. I I mean, I love Stephen. Mm -hmm. He lives in, he lives where I live, so. I know, I love that. I love that man. My my homie. Um, This whole thing, uh, wait. Oh, oh my God. Okay, speaking of family trauma. So the, in this, the first episode, like I said, is called Junior. It's all about like Vince McMahon Sr. At the time, you know, it was the territories and Vince McMahon Jr. was the one that basically, he was a colonizer. He was a wrestling colonizer. He like took over the other territories, got the talent, la la la, which it's actually really funny that later. When he, WCW does it to him, yes. it, he like flips the narrative real hard. He's like, you're coming and after literally... a family business. And, and they literally have... ask him and they ask him, I was like, do you not see the similarities between what you did and what Bischoff and Turner did? And he's like, he's like, no, 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 no. Like I went to go in there and compete. I didn't go in there to like hurt the competition. I'm like, you went in bribed all of their top talent with more money same thing wcw did yep took all their talent the top talent so that they you made them want to work in new york and you get enough of them everyone's going to follow suit why like mm-hmm. it's the same you did the same thing same formula and it's funny he says something super psychotic when they ask him that question and i'll have to we'll get to it but he says something like oh no no sometimes i The things I actually feel in my head are not the things I say out loud. Like, as a business person, sometimes you just have to say something, even if you don't mean it. Like, he said something really psycho. And Mm I, and and again, it's like, nobody edited that together and made you say that. Like, nobody, like, you just said that. You just said, like, yeah, no, I lie all the time and just say shit because that's, as a business, I need to say something. So, literally, he... He said, like, when they're like, okay, so you really don't see the similarities? He goes, no, you're not understanding me. Like, yeah, of course I do. I'm just telling you I don't because that's business. Like, that's basically what he said. Like, it was so crazy. Mm-hmm. He is so, he is such, like, a gaslighter, manipul- like, a master manipulator. Yeah. And he's literally telling you. He's like, I am saying that to to tell, to make you think that that's how I feel when I don't. Right. right. And I was like, what? Like, 
What? Crazy. Okay. Absolutely. That's insanity. crazy. Um, but the other thing I want to mention from the first episode was um the John Stossel incident where that reporter which okay. So this incident was basically like a reporter, John Stossel, he was trying to like air out wrestling. He was trying to like come in and be like, sorry to tell the fans it's fake. And we've said this before. If you want to go into a wrestler's into their job and then say their job is fake, you might deserve to get hit. I'm sorry. Right. I said it. I said it because how dare that is horrible and rude and just not okay. And like, right. So basically, John Stossel's going around going like, okay, but is it fake? Is it, do you use razor blades to cut your head? Like, la la la. And mm -hmm. maybe not quite so flippantly, but you guys right. have the idea. And I, Tony Atlas said that Vince McMahon went into the locker room and he didn't say like somebody beat the shit out of that guy, but he was like, I wish somebody would take care of that guy. Somebody yeah. maybe in this room could mm -hmm. do something about that Absolute, guy. So crazy. And like, that's yes. the thing. And like, those are the, like, that's how much power he had. You know what I mean? That yes. like all of these people were just like, oh yeah, 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 totally. And like, I understand like from a, especially in the, the time that they were in protecting the business was numero uno. That was like, yes. that was oh, yeah. the, the modus operandi right there. Like it mm -hmm. was, um, so I, I understand how easy that must have been for him to just kind of like walk in and have somebody like take up arms, but yeah. like, it's still a very crazy thing to do. <laughs> like, it's still crazy to just be like, I just, um, somebody, somebody, any of these, you know, six foot plus 300 pound, if anybody, anybody wants to just do anything about that. Um, I, I didn't see it. No, period. <laughs> no, period. And like, I, uh, yeah, basically, David, the wrestler named David Schultz, like, slaps the fuck out of him. Oh, sorry. I really curse. Slaps the shit <laughs> out of him. And like, really. And this guy, like, runs for his life, by the way. Um, mm -hmm. And Tony Atlas, like, no, we all celebrated. And when they asked Tony Atlas, like, do you think he was, like, trying to protect the wrestler, I guess, because he, you know, the case, like, um, I think he tries to sue, but it doesn't really go anywhere. I don't remember. But basically, he's like, no, he wasn't no, trying they to settle. protect. Oh, they settle. Okay. Yeah. At, well, the end of the at the end of the episode. It, it's, they said the thing that they settled. That. Okay. Because mm -hmm. that also happened with Richard Belzer, which Correct. this pissed me off. I'm not going to lie. Like, how, like, Richard Belzer asks Hulk to put a wrestling move on him. He does it and then gets injured and then sues hulk for injuring him but you asked you were right. like yeah put a move on me because it's fake like i don't believe in it and hulk is like it's kind of hard when you're sitting there and someone's telling you your job is fake and then he t makes you put a rest he has you put a wrestling move on him and then it mm -hmm. goes badly and somehow like you're sued like i kind of agree that that's stupid no i agree especially because I'd be like, like eggs on my face. I I made a mistake. I'm an idiot. Like I'm so sorry. Yeah, uh, but like, I think it I was just because it like uh, I don't know maybe because it was like a TV personality. He had to like save face or whatever. I guess. But when he gets dropped, his head hits the floor and he's like bleeding. Like it's it, it was a not a no. It wasn't. Like a, it was bad. Yeah, it was not nothing. So no, I it wasn't. But like, but like you you. You at like, whatever. Mm -hmm. I would have been like, well, eggs on my face. Like, I that was really stupid of me. Mm -hmm. Like, I, but I have a little something called pride. Um, not really. But they talk about the first WrestleMania, which was a huge success. Mm -hmm. Like, so I guess like those like cases had come on the heels or like the precursor to WrestleMania, and they like talked about how despite all of that, WrestleMania was a huge success. Correct. Episode two was called Heat. Um. Oh, this was crazy. Uh, I just want to say, again, people just love to tell themselves, Hulk Hogan is an arc. Never liked him. Uh, I know what he did for wrestling, whatever. But I guess um, wrestlers were complaining that they were literally working. Basically, they had to work seven days a week, 52 weeks a year. It was at, like just ungodly conditions. Yeah, it was and exploitation. Was... That's that's Ab that's exactly absolutely. what it is. It's capitalistic exploitation. So it's, it's, hi, these are my workers. I'm going to use them for every drop of sweat that they could possibly give me. And then I'm going to toss them aside. And there are no, because no one is paying attention to the sport. It's just, that's just the way it is. That's just how it goes. Like, this is just how we do it. Like, and 
no one is pet and there's no regulations there's, mm-hmm. there's literally nothing in place to protect these wrestlers and we've talked about this in the show before and whatever but like so there was somebody jesse the body ventura tried to unionize the wrestling industry and right. hulk hogan literally admits he goes no i went to vince and i told on them I yeah. said, they're trying to unionize and they're going to walk out of Madison Square Garden and they're going to really embarrass you. So you better do something about it. Right. And literally every, it aired me out. Every wrestler they interviewed, which there was like Bret Hart, Tony Atlas. Like there were so many people and they were all like, yeah, Hulk Hogan narked. He's a rat. He's right. a what? Like all of them were like, yeah, no, he blew the doors off that for no reason other than to continue right. being in the boss's pocket. And that ruined but, the relationship between Jesse the Body Ventura and Vince. So much yep. so that Jesse only returned this year because Vince was gone. Yeah. Girl. The, and it's Jesse crazy. was a wrestler. He was a he was part of a legendary commentary team for like the for so long. It was him and um uh gorilla monsoon they were on commentary forever together um and that basically ruins their relationship and then so much so like vince badmouths jesse the rest of you know the rest of the time like anytime jesse's name is brought up vince is all over it bad mouth if vince is very much like that though vince is very much like uh um you cross me you're dead until you come back to me and it's like a you're like a joke. I'm like Ugh. Jesse, right? Right. Like he's so like flippant. It's so gross mm-hmm. to me. But wait, since you brought up Gorilla Monsoon, I want to also quickly mention I did not know that Gorilla Monsoon like was gunning, the co-owner was trying to have like just sole ownership of WWE before Vince came into Vince Jr. came into the picture. And Correct. Vince Jr. the way he acquires the company is so crazy. He's like, oh, I'm gonna pay for it in he X pay amount for it of payments. In installments. installments. And he goes, if I ever miss one payment, you keep the money and the business. Mm-hmm. And they literally like sure. And I think at one point he's like, speaking of daddy issues, he's like, Do you think your dad wanted you to succeed? And he's like, oh, yeah no i think so and then like i think tony atlas is like he literally tried so hard to sabotage his own son at every turn like want he was a joke like wanted to sabotage him at every turn and i just remember too he didn't say to vince um he only said i love you one time and it was the day before he died correct his dad crazy never hugged hugged him one time it was like so twisted. And again, I've said this. This is how evil begets evil. And I want to say this and not to like get on a preachy like soapbox or high horse, but like we talk about so much about how like the patriarchy affects women and it does, but it actually also really affects men. Mm-hmm. You guys don't, you, some of you guys are not clocking this, but it's actually really destroying a lot of you as well. Mm-hmm. Sorry. Like it is. Like this is whatever. This um, is toxic for I'm, everybody. It's, it's bad for everyone. For literally everyone, and actually, especially you. Mm-hmm. But I'm gonna leave it at that. Right. But mm-hmm. crazy. Um, they so there there was the they go into like WrestleMania like two and yeah. three. Yeah. Um, Hogan versus Andre. They made it sound like it was you know the first time. Very much so was not. The Vince had to literally bribe andre with paying for a surgery that andre didn't really want to get yeah yeah, yeah. literally rolled up on the set of the princess bride and was like hey crazy isn't that so nuts um and was like hey can you want to do this um and i love this i love this because everybody everybody that was interviewed that worked for wwe at the time they were like 93,000 people 93,000 people 93,000 people and then And then Meltzer comes in. And I love like, Dave Meltzer. He's like, he's like, they all say 93,000 so often that they all believe it. Like, they all think that that is fact when you can actually go and look at it. And it was actually 78,000 people. So crazy. I love it. Because, like, they it was they literally did, like, a little cut, uh, like, a quick little edit. It was Vince, 93,000. Hulk, 93, well, Hulk, 73. Hulk and, did like specific to the digit. And I was like, Hulk, you don't even know that. Like, you're right. crazy for that. So funny. So, so, so funny. funny. 
whoever did the editing on this was mm, a one. It was they had a lot of those moments, but it wasn't overdone. Mm-hmm. Where it like cut quick cut like a lot of similarities what people were saying, and then someone would be like, "Yeah, that didn't happen." Right, love that at all. They just love that, that. love that. And Schumacher actually says nothing, any, nothing that any wrestler or anyone involved in wrestling tells you should be regarded as fact, which Isn't is that crazy, hysterical. <laughs> and he's like, he works, I think, for the Wall Street Journal. Um, and he was just so like. He was one of my favorite people, too. I love people that can be, like, really cut and dry like that. Like, just like, mm, no, that's not just not the truth. Mm-hmm. And Tony Atlas said, every word out of Hulk's mouth was Vince talking. Mm-hmm. And Hulk even says he it was, was all a mouthpiece. Vince. It was all Vince. He was just a mouthpiece. Like, And I think Stephanie McMahon at one point is like, sometimes I get mad because everyone gives Hulk the credit and it, like, bothers me. But it was like, it was my dad. My dad was the mastermind behind all of it. And, you know. Mm-hmm. mastermind being the apropos word but um then they get into like the steroid trials i wrote i love the beef between phil mushnick and the wwe so much i don't even care no and they're like and, and vince is like i don't know why he came after me so hard like blah 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 and they just cut to phil mushnick and he goes because he's a dirt bag right he always knew he always knew okay there's a lot of reasons i love phil mushnick um but one of his paper quotes like because they zoomed in on like some of his like newspaper clippings and it says like is it possible that vince mcmahon could be such a disingenuous could just be a disingenuous creep yeah and clocked clocked and read and like immediately and i also got um you know we they get into the ring boy scandal which was crazy so like So I don't go ahead. No, no, no. Um, just as a for anybody, we're not gonna go super in depth on all of these topics. Um, yeah. If you want an in depth look at the steroid trial, there's an after dark episode. If you want, oh, yes. an in depth look at the Ring Boy scandal, watch the Pat Patterson episode. Yes. Um, just so a- anybody that is just kind of listening to this one episode doesn't think we're like, like glossing what is over things. We. We go into We've it a covered lot things on separate uh, episodes, but continue. Yeah, and if you guys do want us to deep dive more on these episodes, Let trust and believe we would. We, we, we absolutely, absolutely will do. if you really want us to go play by play, especially for those of you who don't have Netflix. So, Netflix Alina. But they go into the Ring Boy scandal, which I actually, we like you said, we talked a little bit about this on the Pat Patterson episode, but there, this is what really got me, is that they, so... Pritchard claims, Bruce Pritchard claims that Pat was accused because of the rampant homophobia at the time, which we did kind of discuss could be a possibility. It's like people were really willing to blame gay people for a lot of fucking shit. Sorry. Right. Um, And apparently, allegedly, Vince went to Dave Meltzer and said Mm -hmm. that there was at least one innocent person who was accused out of the three which the three it was like mel phillips and terry garvin were the other people accused right. which there's a lot of things and he's saying pat patterson was the innocent person there's a lot of things that really disturb me about that and one of them is the fact that okay so you're admitting that the other two people are guilty and you knew that you and you knew you are telling dave okay one of them is is innocent which means two of them are not correct and you know correct and then, which was so crazy, again, the, the immediate cut was, um, they immediately cut to Tony Atlas saying that they all knew Pat did it. They right. all knew he did it. They all knew he was involved. And because Pat would just grab his genitals all the time without asking, would just go into the locker room and just like grab people's mm-hmm. like genitals. And then the interviewer was like, did you ever say anything? And he's like, to who? To who? He, he was like, he's the number, he's the booker. He's number two. He's like, so why didn't you go to Vince? And then he just laughs. 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 Just, like, he's like, he, and then he, and then he goes on to say, there was no one to go to. Like. He says, um, you either take it or you go home. He needed Pat more than he needed any of us. Crazy. Scary. Mm-hmm. So scary. And like, again, men are suffering men are suffering a lot too right. like and i'm not trying to be like whatever but and we th- that is so dark i'm sorry so dark it's so messed up and then um 
before that they and this is just very brief um because he has his own dark side of the ring episode um jimmy snooka that incident uh oh, in the hotel room where yes. a woman apparently hit her head and died and it was uh apparently like the police thought it was a homicide but there wasn't enough evidence to like do anything about it and that is crazy 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 and they say like that they um feel that like vince did something to like keep that quiet mm -hmm. and that is so scary and we'll have to watch that episode of after dark because i didn't know any of that like i think right. only experience i have with jimmy snook is they like randomly had him in like on an episode of wwe like a pay-per-view or something right right right, right. and he was older whatever mm -hmm. but um here's actually what really like again i love film motion again this actually really like made like reaffirmed how much i love him is when they talk about rita marie mm -hmm. who was i guess a female ref at the time mm -hmm. she was the first female ref and they were really highlighting her and the short version is she came out a long time after so it was outside of the statute of limitations and said that she was sexually assaulted by vince he like forced her to do oral and then when he couldn't get off he like you know ripped her jeans off and like it's it's horrible right and phil mushnick goes he's like emotional and he's like and they tore her to shreds in the media that she's just some slut that um like was trying to go after a billionaire it could there's no, no way it could have happened straight up victim blaming and he straight literally yes blaming. absolutely and he said um he got emotional and was literally like it people were literally saying that like her story wasn't resonating and it's like it's it's not about storytelling. It's, it's the truth. It's the truth. And what really got me together, I got so emotional over this, is at the end of the episode. So, and I remember this happening last year, not her case specifically, but this happening in New York, is that in last year in New York, they temporarily lifted the statute of limitations on alleged sexual assault victims like so that they could come forward and a lot of it had to do with the church at the time mm -hmm. but it was it ended up being beneficial for a lot of people as soon as that happened as soon as that happened vince pays her a Mo shit ton of money multi-million dollar settlement multi-million dollar settlement settlement to rita in as soon as that happened so you know it was true. It literally and you know, just... and you know, he he was admitted because like no one, no one that doesn't commit sexual assault brings up the statute of limitations as like a and period. I'm sorry, you don't go like and even if I even if there had been a like uh, a sexual assault, the statute of limitations like was up. So and then move. Why would you say that? Like that like, is psycho. Right, right. Psycho. And the thing that's crazy is you're being interviewed and asking about it after the fact. Like, hello, in twenty. You you paid this woman millions oh. of dollars for what? Nothing. And that's what gags me is like again. Why would you? Why would you? Why would you pay her if you didn't like? Because it's not like she brought it up. Like unless I don't know, but either way, it's just like if you were so sure of your innocence, you have the a lawyer team that has gotten you out of more than you could possibly uh -huh. not actually be innocent. Like you know what I'm saying? So what? Because it's true, and that literally curdled my blood. Like. Mm -hmm. Dis disturbing again you you tell on yourself but mm -hmm. so that's how the episode ends then episode three was the screw job which was this was the big spoiler for me so if you watch our regular show you know that we have not yet gotten to the montreal screw job but we are rapidly approaching correct um though i will say this this is a spoil i'm actually okay with seeing the back end before I actually see it, because then I'll understand what's happening. Mm -hmm. Like, cause this isn't a thing that's going to be obvious. It's like, you're going to be like, wait, I don't no. understand. If you saw it but like just live, moment... it would have been a lot of me having to backtrack. Which right. So it's fine. Cause I expect it because we will 100% do an, a, a whole other after dark episode just on God. the screw job. I have um, to. Because there are many a documentary, many an interview, lots of stuff going on there. we have to we have to discuss because it's it i text xavier in all caps like no mm -hmm. no like right because you guys if you guys are not new here you know how much i love bret hart and like i just feel like they 
yeah. uh, whatever. So basically the way that they set it up um, on like how like to to explain that this is not something out of the realm of possibilities that Vince was capable of as they talk about Wendy Richter and how Vince literally screwed her out of her title belt, which is so crazy and and basically they give her they she didn't want to give up the title belt allegedly so vince was like so we gotta make her give it up and so they had the ref do a three count even mm-hmm. though her shoulders were she was like not even on the floor right it was really crazy and i do understand a little bit as far as yes, like being course. a promoter and being like uh at the end of the day like i make the decision as far as what happens in the show like as far as who's the champion what you know that that is the the owner the booker their call your job as the wrestler is not to be like like, no not to like make the ending yourself like that's not how that's supposed to go um so i can understand from a like professional standpoint it was like if you're not gonna do it like this is this is my company. <laughs> like you're gonna like, do it. Uh, like um, yeah, hundred percent. Uh, because that is very much just in the wheelhouse of like that is your job. Like if your boss tells you that you're gonna lose the championship, like you're gonna lose the championship. You're gonna lose the championship. No, a hundred. And I I felt the same way. And again, I don't know anything about the situation. They they didn't get. Oh, super I, I think into it was it. like you know, um, it's cold. It's certainly cold. Um, oh, of course, yeah. Um, but, and then right after they go get into that, uh, that like cuts to Vince and he's like, I don't fight fair period. Right. Period. Right. And what was crazy is they also asked him, I have like a quote, they asked him something about like, did you learn anything from like either the steroid trials or like something the federal government was sniffing around about? And all he said was, all I learned was that the federal government sucks. Right. And like, yes, but also like hello like hello. you didn't learn anything right. at all other than okay okay so anyway <laughs> so crazy. um i i also wrote because then in this episode they're getting into like obviously hulk hogan has left because of the steroid trials now he's at wcw and they try and make lex luger you know the guy and he just kind of flops the way they talk about lex luger sometimes is like i like said sometimes they feel bad about it because they're like he just was a flop like we wanted him to be the it boy he didn't have it he just kind of sucked Mm-hmm. which is not not true and we know that he really ends up in some bad waters at some point but sometimes i'm like yeah he's just oh it's always on record that he was a flop and that kind of sucks but yeah um they talk about the final night of razor and diesel and on literally like because it was a live event it wasn't recorded they somehow got like shaky 90s video camera footage the from a fan called amazing the curtain call because i've only heard heard about this in the lower i've not seen it Mm -hmm. um and this was again like the shot heard around the world and i didn't understand i did not understand really how serious this was was and what it meant to the business until i saw this and i know that sounds ignorant but i just like really couldn't no how could you conceptualize it the the rest the way that wrestling is presented today is so vastly different than it was yes. before that incident. That incident kind of right. kickstarts the like, you know, the peeling behind the oh, like it's okay to let people know that like this is not real. Um, but at the right. time, not that was that was just it was like blasphemy. Like people were livid. Livid. livid and i again just out of total ignorance like i did not understand like i knew that there was like again there's the protecting of the business like even though we know we know wink wink we don't know and like there's right. this and then they really... go into to talk about like kayfabe and like it is the, yes it is the like you it's like the agreement between the wrestlers and the audience to kind of like suspend, suspend. disbelief um, yes. and kind of enjoy the show for what it is, you know? Yeah, there was a Triple H quote at the very beginning. It said, it's not that it's not people who um don't believe like it's not that people don't know it's real it's fit, or not yeah. real. He is it's people who are smart enough to know it's not real, but buy into the characters. Right. Is like basically what he says. It's like mm-hmm. where they're at now. But right. It's like, you know, you go to a, a 
like a play, it's like, I know that's not real, but you suspend right. your, you went go and you go enjoy it for what it is. It's the a same period. thing. A hundred percent. So I, now this really like, I, I, I felt the tabooness of it, like mm -hmm. fully, like for what it was. Yeah, and Bret Hart goes like they killed wrestling that day. No, literally, he go and I. He is so drama, and I love He's that. So drama. I love Brett. They'll never make me hate you, baby. I know that you've got some demons, and that's okay. But like, mm -hmm. my God, the drama, the way you are, the way you say things is just mwah, so funny to me. But yeah, Cody Rhodes says to anyone my age, it was cool. It was right. so cool. He goes, but to the older generation, it was the cardinal sin. And Undertaker is literally like, yeah, I didn't like it. I right. did not like it. Especially Undertaker, who is literally living his gimmick every minute of every, every day. I can imagine because Being he's pissed. an Undertaker. It's not like he's a Shawn Michaels where it's like, that's my name and that's who I am. And so even if I'm living it out in real life, it's. You know. Whatever, it's kind of still me. Undertaker is literally the undead trying to go to the gas station. Like right. he's he's out. I here. can see he's why he's not he talking would really... to people. He's not going to bars. He's like, you he's know what I mean. He's people. wearing he... all black all the time. Like he's, you know what I mean. Like and then for when he's out in public, he's like trying to scare fans. Like, it, it, but then and then all of a sudden, like this happens, and you're like, these four little dickheads just get out there and hug, and right. I, and he's like, oh. Okay, so like, so, <laughs> so I what get am I doing all this for? Yeah, <laughs> period. So I a hundred percent get it. Um, but Triple said it's crazy. I said to Vince later, it was the biggest moment of the night. So I don't know why I'm being punished. And he goes, he goes, I think a change is coming, and we need to change with it. And Vince said, Yeah, but not today. Mm -hmm. And um, he literally said, direct quote, You're going to have to learn to eat shit and like the taste of it. Yes. which we know. Um, then we're again Monday Night Wars. Eric Bischoff at some point and. At first, I was like, ew, of course you would say this. But then it made sense. He says, stealing is in the eye of the beholder. And that's right. when it gets into Vince saying, you know, like not understanding that it's basically the same thing. And also, we know he did this to ECW. We know he also did that. Mm -hmm. He stole from ECW as well. I mean, literally yeah, stole but the, from Steve at, Austin. At the, at the very least, ECW was compensated and then given WWF screen time. A hundred percent. And I will say... You know, I, I believe Heyman it was a, a Paul Heyman symbiotic yeah, relationship. Well, yeah, Paul Heyman goes, it says like Vince always looked at other promotions as feeders for the WWF. Like it was and just. And how could you not? not? I mean, you kind of have to. It's kind of like like an actual sports team. It's like you're drafting, you, you're drafting, you're picking, you're like looking at, uh, at other teams and seeing like maybe we can get like a that pitcher, maybe like right. whatever sports. Mm -hmm. Right. Um. So it it makes sense, but this is when Vince says, "What I say is sometimes different than what I think," and I was like, "So you're literally saying you're manipulating people?" Mm -hmm. Okay. Um. And I thought this was interesting too. Vince never considered turning Hulk into a heel because obviously they talk about how the the Hulk heel turn was like one of the greatest moments. Blah blah blah. Right. Again, we have a whole moment on that with the Monday Night Wars. If you guys want to watch it, um. But I. Like, I think that's interesting that he never even thought of that. Like, no, Hulk was always supposed to be this good guy, la, la, la. But he was willing to turn so many other people into heels. I thought it was fascinating. Mm -hmm. They talk about the 83 straight weeks, which is so, so, I was going to say the funny, way, but I don't even know. The way they cling to that. Like, and I get it. It Like, an accomplishment, sure. Like, by, like that is not an easy thing to do. They were really like handedly kicking the WWF's ass and like I get it but it is yeah. 2024 we are now like third almost 30 years after the fact and this yeah. man is still riding that 83 week high like that shit happened two weeks ago and it's like no baby 30 there that streak that like whatever can retire now like it's like at this where oh my like, god it's old enough to retire it has been working has that long so that, that line <laughs> so long that it now it's it is tired it wants to collect social security it's time medicine. to travel you right. don't have any responsibilities anymore it's time to see the world like i, I don't it, it's so crazy move and the on. Fact that when he said he had the podcast named 83 weeks i was like i got to go i've got to go 
well, I gotta go. Mm. And this, I'm sorry, Mess. he had a few really amazing ideas, and I will not take that from him. He did. But then, again, they talk about the reason it flopped is because he never came up with any ones beyond that. He just was like, this is the one idea, I, or the few ideas I have. I'm just going to keep milking them. And then the milk ran dry, sweetie. Like there, And you mm-hmm. had nothing else. You had nothing else. It Like, Vince McMahon is a psycho, but he literally was fueling the nightmare machine for, like, mm-hmm. 30 years, right. like, longer. Right. Like, mm-hmm. I, so I'm sorry, like, you, you lost the whatever. I mean, we all know it. We all know how I feel. We all know how Xavier feels. We're there. But then... Miss Girl, they get into the Brett and Sean beef, and I love mm. this because I it gives. I don't know if this is true, and I meant to ask you, but like, have they reconciled now? Like, are they okay with each few, other now? They've had like, um, yes, they have reconciled. Like, okay, they are. It, it they gave are that energy. Like, I don't think they will ever be friends. I don't. You know you what can't. I mean? But they are very. They they've uh, they're very civil about it. Also. Also, Sean is a very different person now. <laughs> um, right. He said that. He said, he goes, I was a prick back then. Right. And he was on a talk... lot of drugs. He yes. Was, I was going to say uh, that. A lot, on a lot of painkillers. He was a mess. So, uh, and then, you know, he is forced to retire, finds Jesus, starts a family, comes back. Very different person. Um, right. Still, I'm, I'm just as an amazing a competitor, which is shocking to all when he does come back because we're like, oh. holy shit, it's been four years and he's still that good. Um, yeah, mm, he has a but, gift. Uh, truly. Um, and then, uh, where were they going with this before this? I don't remember. You were talking about Sean changing. Were you going to say something about Brett changing? I mean... It's gone. Doesn't matter. Moving okay. on. I was going to say this something we don't ever talk about on the the regular show, but we mention when we watch the show is like sometimes Sean comes out and I go, oh, he's high as a kite right now. Mm-hmm. Like he is on drugs. Like sometimes, especially recently, we've clocked it more and we don't really say it on the regular show, but we're it's after dark, sweetie. Um, there's sometimes he comes out and I'm like, whoa, right. I like you can just tell like it's mm-hmm. really crazy. Um, Anyway. So the beef, as we know, was in real life. What Vince says about it is they're like, so what did you, because they obviously put the beef on television and made it real, um, or made the real beef part of the show. And they're like, what were your thoughts about that beef? He goes, my thoughts at the time were that this was very good for television. Yep. Again, crazy. And again, yep. not no, like, yes, mm-hmm. but also like just the way he says it is like so scary. Um I literally wrote, and I'm going to curse again, sorry, but uh, the Montreal screw job got me on my fucking knees. I was oh. upset about this. Right. I was devastated about mm-hmm. this. Devastated. Because... And again, I do uh, understand. I do get it. I do get it. Like, do I, though? Okay, because here's here's my thing. I get it. Not wanting to relinquish the title is, is bad, bad, bad. And they were saying that basically... Uh, Brett was locked into a contract for that was like 20 years long. Vince was like, it's not working. You don't want to be here. I kind of don't want you to be here anymore either. There's loopholes in your contract. Take those to WCW and negotiate for money. Negotiate. Like, right. gave him to leave. And they basically wanted it was like Bret Hart versus Shawn Michaels in Montreal. And like, Brett was like, I don't want to lose the belt to him. And I don't want to do it in Canada. And, like, I kind of get it. Like, if you really hate that person, like, for all that they are, whatever. And also, it's like, they're literally, we've just talked about this on the normal show. I'm going to, I'm going to side with you in the end. (laughs) Just let me get there. (laughs) Xavier, if you're not watching Xavier's making a face like Miss Girl, he's still (laughs) a contractually obligated employee. (laughs) But I, I, it's, They're because they're riding the Canada thing. They're riding mm-hmm. the Canada train right now. We just talked about this on the other show, and it's so annoying. But also, Shawn Michaels was your opponent, like was the person you were in beef with at the time. It doesn't make sense for you to lose the belt to anybody else. Like, Correct. so I get why they had to do it that way, but also like to the way it went down is so filth. And I it's know that so you guys filth. know I don't yeah. have to if you are new to wrestling, basically they like 
with to add insult to injury, they they have Shawn Michaels put Bret Hart in Bret Hart's finisher, which is just foul. Mm-hmm. And said he Bret Hart tapped out of a sharpshooter. You got me. You got me messed up. I was on that couch fighting for my life, mm-hmm. thank Jesus. I was I like, you cannot be serious. Mm-hmm. And then Shawn Michaels, they lies. Brett's heart, Brett's like, did you know about this? And he's like, I swear on my life I didn't know about this. Yes, you did. Vince told and him and I Triple know. H to lie. He said, do not. He's like, you, you lied dare. to everyone's face. And I was like, you say it was my decision to the end. He's like, you don't say anything. Um, and but again, you ha- when your boss has that kind of control, as we know um, he does. I, yeah. It's crazy. And when Julie is in the back girl and she points in Triple H's face and goes, God is going to strike you down. Mm-hmm. I felt that in my soul and I was like Julie uh-huh. I know they're not together anymore but like wow. god she had that really scary like quiet ferocity that I believe like I believe she was a witch that put a curse on him mm, I get that god is gonna strike you down and period Julie and then Brett punch it live Brett punches Vince's mother effing lights out literally yes. knocks him out cold undertaker was like i don't even know how he got the shot in but we were all like okay <laughs> right work and vince claims and he was like this was my one solid for bread i was gonna go in and let him punch me so he could get girl that is just straight machismo talking you are such a the lies the lies the lies, the lies. i'm sorry there ain't right. no way. And if you really want that to happen, he said he came in with all these people. Again, that's why they were shocked that Brett even got the hit in. And Brett says he got in like under mm-hmm. his arm or whatever and like literally knocked him out cold, starfish on the ground, messed up. And uh, Julie, again, Brett's like, yep, knocked him out. And Julie's like, I'm proud of you. Mm-hmm. And p- amen and period, Julie, mm-hmm. seriously. I'm sorry, I'm really, I went into this one a little bit because it really took me off guard. I really, I did not know this was how it went down. Mm-hmm. Vince says, I don't regret any of it. They're like, any regrets? He goes, no, no regrets. Uh, I, I, yeah. And I get Vince's- it. You cannot, they have already had people take WWE. The reason there's no women's division is because the women's champion at the time jumped ship and then dumped the title in the, the garbage can. Yeah. Uh, like he wasn't going to let that happen again with his prized title, like the, the title. Belt. He wasn't going to do it. And not for nothing. <sighs> you're an employee. It doesn't matter. What I you know. Want. It doesn't it's matter. Like, I think I just think too much about like who they are as people yeah as we should a little bit but like but to me bret hart always had this like and this could be just again like the 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 character and the person just fusing in my brain but it's just like i just don't i think he had such a strong moral compass deep down i don't think he would have done that like taking the belt to wcw like i know he was like really in a bad place he wanted to drop it the next night on raw uh, which so what's the problem with that? Like I get So what's the problem is people paid for a pay-per-view that is people paid for. Raw is free. People spent money to go to this show. People spent money to buy the show and have it streamed into their homes. You better deliver. I'm sorry. Oh. Like you're an employee. I it sucks. It absolutely sucks. No, you're sucks. right. And, because... and, 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 and the way it was was they made it the most shitty. That they possibly could have for Brett. They made yeah, it they hurt did. the most. And yeah. that I I will forever be like, the way you did it is <clears throat> shitty, but I don't blame him for doing it. Yeah. And you're so real for that. I, I know. Because really I, I, I <laughs> don't want to defend Vince McMahon ever. No, I know. And I know that a... you're right. Because because if it's like we had this crazy fight on a pay-per-view and then to lose it on Raw, that also is kind of like that hurts your credit also. Right. So I I do understand. It just really I again I knew nothing about this. Mm-hmm. You should have seen me on that couch. I, I should have seen me. I know. Fighting this is the for first my time. Life. There's a lot to, to. There's a lot of um emotion you have to get through before you can like. Let me think about this. A little I bit. had to. I'm literally like all the pieces are still the threads are still like weaving mm-hmm. themselves into the blanket that I will cover myself in tonight. I just like really was like <laughs> so. 
woo it was crazy um anyway i wrote also to the quote i can use this as business is vince's life slogan he said that a lot where it's like he yeah. sees the story i'm gonna use this as business he sees his life i'm gonna use this as business mm-hmm. blah, blah, blah. like crazy yeah and he um, essentially uses the heat from the the bret hart the screw job to become mr mcmahon mr mcmahon so it's like really coming. We're like really almost there. We're really so here, yeah. so scared. So yeah, they talk about uh getting into the attitude era, which is where we're at in the regular show. Vince talks about how he loved getting heat. He loved being hated. And mm-hmm. it seems like in real life also. Um and it's so funny because this is they kind of end the episode. Well, not end the episode, but um they get into uh how like everyone says again, it's the harsh cut of the editing mm-hmm. he goes like because vince is like yeah everyone thinks that like i am mr mcmahon but i'm not it's just a character whatever and then every person was like no no that's that's him that's really him that's him yeah that's him chris right. jericho um like everybody everybody no that's really him yeah no fully. and even even bruce pritchard who in the end is like gung-ho praise Vince is still even like oh no no I've I've seen Mr. Listen, McMahon I wouldn't be him. surprised if you find Bruce Pritchard like living under Vince McMahon's like testicles so let's <laughs> take everything that Bruce Pritchard says with a grain of salt because I, there's no way you're number two for that long and you don't know shit don't uh, even period and you better act accordingly because i'm telling you and again because you're next ignorance. baby i'm so sorry you're next i said that last night we were watching i was like you are next and the willful ignorance disgusts me mm-hmm. it, it's either you knew when you didn't say anything or you chose not to know because there's no way you're with him this often almost every day of of your life and you don't know what's happening right and willful ignorance is my least favorite type of bitch. Right, 100%. And then, like, he goes into, at the end, tells this, like, story about, like, how Vince McMahon, like, paid for his wife's, like, I was like, yeah, you have all his secrets. He's going to take care of you. <laughs> like, uh, and, and period. Like, he's not going to be, like, because I don't know who Bruce Pritchard is, mama. He could be blackmailing Vince. As well. Like, listen, I know a lot of dark shit. You better take care of my wife. Right. And like, go for it. Also, alleged, I made that up. Like, let's no, not. No, obviously, we're not. Don't yeah, come yeah. for me. But like, I'm just saying, like, I don't know what goes on in that in that place. Right. No, Whatever. Clearly not. But you did. But Bruce, you did. And that's that. And that's mm-hmm. all I'm going to say about that. But. And you riding to Vince's crusade this hard is not a good look when he's. It's super not. Getting investigated by the federal government for sex trafficking. Is that really what you want? Is that is that really the side of history you want to be on, Bruce? And. Interesting. And no, seriously. And also, like, I know he's been investigated by the feds before, but not like this, boo. It's not it's like this. Be... No, no, no. Um, it, his company was investigated before. He is getting oh, investigated yeah. now. <laughs> like, yes. Really scary. I mean, him and his company. WWE is not going to get away with no repercussions, but no, which also I will say, and we'll maybe get into this in a little bit, but it made me like feel second guessy and icky a little bit about Triple H and Stephanie. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I feel like now I'm like really suspicious of them. And I, I, it may, we'll get into it when we get into the family stuff like mm-hmm. briefly, but like it made me, I was like, now I feel, now I feel scared, right, about this, but. They talk about Owen. This literally, I was in tears about this because, again, mm. I know that Owen Hart dies a very tragic death, but I didn't know the like. I didn't the even think about of it. God, and I and uh, Brett got emotional at one point talking about how like after the Montreal screw job, like Owen was really like a calming force for him, and they show footage of them in the ring, and like it just mm-hmm. it was so sad, and like they basically make a mockery of Owen after Brett is gone, like make a mockery of his character and who he is. Like, that's what kind of what they said is like, they mm-hmm. made, they reverted him back to that like bird character he was. And that was supposed to be the gig that he like flew in. Right. And I just, they should have never continued that match. I'm sorry. I don't care. And they're like, well, okay. the audience, the rest of the show. That, yeah. Yes. The audience doesn't know, realize that he died. So yeah, all it's of, fine. It, Vince during all of this, Gross. gross really gross. gross i literally wrote in all caps wrong just wrong. wrong you're wrong and they brett was saying they like they literally wheeled owen past wrestlers and then were simultaneously pushing them being like you better get out there 
crazy. And I, there's just no reason for that. There's no re. And what really chilled me to the bone again, I knew that Owen died, but when Jerry gets on commentary and yeah. he's out he's like, of character, he's like, it's, it's not looking good. Yeah. It doesn't look good. Chilled me to the bone. Right because he they could not pretend they could not pretend and no. how could you why would you it's disturbing it's 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 horrible that's like one of your friends right i just really it was foul just mm -hmm. absolutely foul and we'll eventually watch the episode yeah, on after dark about owen um, but and the thing is, is crazy is like vince's reasoning was like the the it happened during a blackout so the crowd didn't see it and it, it doesn't i was like it doesn't you have They're a gonna know. I was like, first of all, like uh, it was just crazy. First of all, like you don't know that they didn't see just because Period. they're in a blackout does not. You don't know what those people like saw or didn't see. You didn't go out and ask. You didn't whatever. Um, and and it it's just a matter of it being an insanely poor taste to disrespect him in that way. Absolutely. Um, because the rest of the pay-per-view owen's blood is stained Ew. on the mat like they had to all of his friends had to go out and wrestle on top of their dead friend's blood because their boss wanted the show to go on terrible and we wow. haven't watched the pay-per-view um because we're not there yet uh chronologically but i'm telling you undertaker there's this it, it is the most chilling thing i have ever seen the undertaker makes it to the ring and he's like taking all like he's getting help like taking off his jacket and he's like just staring like off into like the distance and you can tell like he has been crying like he's his eyes are red like he's just staring off in the distance like i can't believe i have to do this right now and it, just absolute insanity. It's just it, it was just in shitty, shitty taste. Like, why would Absolutely. you do that? Um, it's just like really you couldn't like just take the loss for one night. For one night, you couldn't just figure that out. And it's not like it's something stupid. No, I'm sure people will understand. And and that's the thing too. It's like he's saying nobody saw, but it's like, but they're gonna find out. Like, right. it's going to be news. They're going to know that somebody that died Owen Hart in front of died them, and they didn't even in front of you. And then they carried on the show like they're going to find out. So just whatever. It just I could talk about this all day. It just really disgusts me. There was no reason for it. I don't care what you say. You'll never convince me. The end. Period. Sure. Um, And someone had said to um. Like, as if he would have, if it was his own son, like, say his own son had died. Someone said, like, in the show, like, if his own son had died, if he would continue the show. And it was so funny. My roommate and I were like, actually, probably, yeah. Yeah. No. And then Vin, like, knowing Vince, Vince he's, I, like, he's like, if I had died in the middle of the ring, I wanted, I would have wanted them to continue the show. Yes. And, and someone's like, like, but if his own son, it's like, no, he would have. He would have let no, the show go on if his own son had died. But it's, it's also, but it's also just like, it's not about you period it's not. like someone died that works for you tonight it's not about you <laughs> like... um yeah it's horrible and they uh they talk about chris benoit which we have talked three to episodes about. to go <laughs> three, three episodes whoa so that that's a whole thing they talk about you know handling uh cte and and you know obviously again we've talked about the whole like ha airing the tribute the same day they found out even in the news coming in you guys again you can watch those episodes it's yeah. that's a whole thing that's a whole and I think that's, like, thing crazy as i i feel like they did this like that tribute because they didn't do one for for owen right and like so this was them trying to like you know make sure they didn't make the same mistake twice but mind you as the tribute show is going on. The um, information, the evening news is reporting on all of this like heinous things that they're like discovering. So yeah. like it just it, I I feel like they were trying to do the right thing. It just the timing was just so bad. 
like could not have been right. worse. And yeah, and we've said this before, but it's like you just don't ever imagine that that's like what happened. Mm-hmm. Like you just don't ever imagine that it was a double homicide and suicide. Right. You just couldn't ne- like so they hear that they're dead and they just kind of think they have to do what they have to do. Whatever. Again, we've talked about it, but that whole situation was really crazy. This next part, because Paul Heyman is in this, and you know what? You, if you're not new here, you know I love Paul Heyman. You know Xavier loves Paul. We just love him here. And Paul, Paul Heyman, and are like, yes, I do know that. Um, but there is a part I want to talk about. This there is a part where Paul is talk is like whispering to Steph backstage, and like is mm-hmm. almost like trying to kind of tell her like, you know, your dad is like a psycho, right? Well, like he he, he doesn't said, say that he says he like says, like you know he's trying to he's going to make it so that you're always in like opposition with him like you're always you're going always to going be to be a, a challenge like mm. yes and she was like ha ha it sure feels that way and I was like girl he and, was then, and then Paul's literally like come on like no no no, no. Like, like don't make a joke like come on <laughs> I, and Paul's like no I'm trying to. I'm trying to hold your hand and and take you to enlightenment, girl. Right. Like, this is... Like, he really tried to tell her, like, mm-hmm. crazy. But Paul has... This is where Paul... The sh- the way he shoots, he scores. He said... He said oh, oh, yeah, go ahead. He if, said, this is what I think it is. The Vince is a product of his abuse. Mm-hmm. That part. Vince, yeah. he says... I don't have, like, the whole quote, but he literally says, like... Um, Vince is a product of his abuse. He spent his entire life trying to get back the control that he did not have in his first 12 years of life. He spent his entire life trying to seize the power that was taken from him when he was a child. And he'll, and it's just, it's completely, I think he says even later something like, um, Vince doesn't own WWE, WWE owns Vince. Correct. Because it's just like it's this insane. He calls it the the only monogamous relationship that should... Vince McMahon has ever had is with his company. Um, right. Yeah. Crazy. Um, and and that's Paul, girl. Mm-hmm. I mean, he's never going to tell a lie as far as I know. And oh, maybe um... I'll be proven wrong in. I mean, yes, he will. Absolutely. I, I was like, ask I anybody that, that used to work at ECW. I take that back. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. I was thinking about this, though. Well, never mind. That's like a real mm-hmm. tangent about. But yes, I know Paul has had has many, 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 many faults. But in this moment, I was like, wow. I mean, that is a shoot. Um, then they get into the Stefik man of it all. Um, the way that the uh like the drugging the assault the like all of that that they do I, like oh like the triple h storyline situation yes is is gross. so gross and there's one part that really 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 disgusted me is like because she did a lot of crazy stuff like they're i mean and again women at the time they showed so many clips like the brawn panty matches like women just getting their clothes ripped off like the whole storyline with trish right like barking like a dog like if you're if you really mean it to me like get on your knees and bark like a dog like disgusting Mm -hmm. um but what really disturbed me is the the interviewer asked at one point to 70 like were there any storylines vince pitched that you absolutely refused to do and she goes yeah and they're like what what was one of them and she goes Oh no, like I'm I'm not gonna say. And they cut to Vince and he goes, So one of them, one of them was Steph was going to say she was pregnant, but she wasn't sure if it was mine or not. And then he has and then immediately he has to go like my character. And you're like, ew, ew, ew. ew. Shaking. Literally shaking. Character or not, you're still her father. You're still her her. You are her flesh and blood father. And even if you wanted to, like, hide under the guise of the character, the the character Stephanie McMahon is still the daughter of the character Mr. Mr. McMahon. So either way you shake it, that is the most absurd, messed up, gross thing I've ever heard pitched as a wrestling idea. Like, get a grip. Like, you are disgusting. Like, you are foul. Your daughter, your daughter. And I was like, again, this is some weird, sick trauma that you have to play out. And like, like what? I, 
so crazy. And the the crazy thing is, like, they asked Stephanie, they were like, did you ever think it was weird that it was your father asking you to, like, do these things? And she was like, yeah, I guess so. And it's just, I feel like they just, they are so conditioned to just be like, oh, uh, move, move. Even, uh, there's a quote from Vince that's like, um, whatever you have, like, whatever happened to you were like, your life like throw it the fuck back there and go forward this man doesn't deal with anything he does nope. not he is just constantly on to the next thing this man has never processed anything in his life as far as trauma or <laughs> like or any of his actions or consequences because he hasn't had any consequences no none and i think that like the Shane and Stephanie have more trauma than I could possibly even imagine. And I remember a bunch of the wrestlers said too, like he it's like he intentionally tried to make it hard for them to be successful. And right. he said, I didn't want Nepo babies like my kid, like they were going to work for everything that they had the way that I did and blah, blah, blah. And I can but understand also, that. Yes, I, I, absolutely. I, I can understand you not wanting to have like spoiled children. Sure. Make them work. Do the jobs. You yep, know, yep, work yep, their yep. way out by all means. Period. But not the that way it was expressed was you were so harsh on them, more so than anybody else. And it's just like, how did you think that was going to like work out in your favor? If I mean, really see that like it just built a crazy resentment between Shane and Vince. No, period. And the way that Shane is like, it, what ended up happening is that Shane is borderline. Uh, about to kill himself for you just for good television for the business right like that's what it's giving right like and that is psycho and i will say like i really do hope like not to be like hokey about it but like i really do hope they like they're going to therapy or something because mm -hmm. shane has three boys of his own now and he seems like hey you guys want to come out with me to like the, when they do that whole storyline where shane comes back and like it's the father versus son and la 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 like and he seems like he's maybe doing a better job like i don't know but it's like right from the oh, snippet that we have seen yes we have seen from that tiny 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 example but like god that is years of like unimaginable trauma that is being played out on one of the most popular television shows at the time mm -hmm. and i just don't know how you ever recover from that or ever even be a little bit normal like i don't even know and so that's why i was normal like, is out of the question for them absolutely and like that's why i was kind of like it made me feel like icky a little bit about stephanie and triple h just because even i think tony atlas was like shane never had it in him to run the business because he just is nice He's a good person. And when people see that, they'll like take advantage. Or he said something like that, but he's like, but Stephanie, no one is getting over on her. No one is is taking advantage of her. Like that woman is just like her father. And that freaked me out. I was like, mm. in what way? Like, mm. it's, and again, it's like you, to but me. But I also, it makes me question because of the, the, the final episode and like Stephanie's timeline of everything um, mm. in terms of, like she leaves or she oh the yeah. first time she ends up being co-ceo for a little bit mm -hmm. he comes back she leaves he yep. um oh wait yeah yeah he comes back she leaves mm -hmm. he gets pushed out and mm -hmm. we don't see her, her again until wrestlemania 40 or the, the, the hall again of the fame first time? yeah oh i didn't know that yeah i didn't know that was the first time it was a big her. The first it was uh having Steph out there was like a big deal because it was the first time she'd like shown face after all of the Vince allegations and whatnot. Oh, in the ECW hat, no less. Right. And but my thing is like I just don't I don't know what that relationship is, but that timeline, very weird. Very weird. And I yeah, you're so right. That very fishy, very suspect. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Um yeah. The, so also I want to mention S Sable, the Sable storyline really briefly, yes. like Sable, Sable suing. She basically, this was so crazy. Sable sued for sexual harassment. And we know we're getting into this era where she's like, you know, the it girl. She's like the blonde bombshell. She's naked. Right. Whatever. She sues for sexual assault, sexual assault allegations. She leaves. She left the company. I don't remember what happens if they settle if whatever i think that they do I but so. she 
the gag is she comes back. Yes. This scared me to death. And the thing that was like really weird about it is they ask Vince about like an on-screen like affair with Sable and just I, I go back and watch his response. Something flashes like before his eyes, like some memory, some whatever. There's like a weird creepy smile and then he like goes in and answers the question. Just go back and watch it. It's creepy um, because that I I don't know. It, it's just weird. That whole situation was weird. Why like that she came back and came back to be very much so put in very similar situations. Um, Absolutely, she was. The, she came back to be Stephanie's secretary, and her comeback was her just like lounging on the desk, basically again, basically naked, right. Like, uh, and they're talking about her as if she's not there. Like, Stephanie's, like, yelling in Vince's, Vince McMahon's face, like, this is the whore that sued us and, like, for right. sexual assault. Like, they literally said that. Right. And she's TV. just lounging on the desk. Like, she's just not. And I was literally, like, blink twice if you are in there, girl. Like. Yeah. I, it was so scary to me. Mm-mm. Yeah. me very out. Very weird. Very weird. And when they mentioned the Playboy interview, I have to find this because it disturbed me. One of the quotes was, um, like he they point blank ask him, like, have you had an affair? And he's like, Yes. And they're like, Do you uh, like feel any type of way about it? And he literally goes, The sex was terrific, but from an emotional standpoint, I regret it. Why right. would you even and it's they asked in him, writing. like, why were you <clears throat> so in writing? They were like, Why were you so candid in an interview? He goes, Well, they were asking me a question and I decided to be honest about it. Like what oh now you decided uh every other time we we just say things just to say things um even if like, it's not what we mean but during a playboy interview because it's time for you to be a mm, bro chacho you're like oh yeah I not bro Ugh. Ugh, just, like the, literally the sex was terrific but from an emotional standpoint i regret it right weird you are just disturbed also not the football league not oh, the, the XFL? Football league. Yeah, what that was the... a weird thing. That was a weird foray. And he the way he gets so mad at that interview when they're like, okay, it was a flop, flop Tina Marie. Like, what what was the deal with that? And he like gets in his face. Vince he's like, cannot handle, like, he can't handle it. Like, I don't know. And the thing is, like, there have been multiple interviews throughout the like this yes. that they show yep. where he gets like physical with the interviewers. And I'm like, uh, you can't yeah. just do that. This isn't your show. Like, yep. Crazy. Absolute mm -hmm. insanity. Um, so nuts. So, so and, nuts. And oh, and then they also... go into the uh, the WWF lawsuit um, between the World oh, Wildlife yeah. Fund. Yeah, uh, <laughs> which, is so, which is kind of silly, to be honest. Mm -hmm. But um, this episode ends with Paul talking about the... Because obviously they get into the whole Shane thing. And Shane is literally like... We talked about this a little bit in the beginning where he's like, yeah, I like... I finally got a hug from my dad that day and that made me feel good. It was like, I, I, he goes, it was literally, there was, we actually hugged for a decent amount of time. There were even pats on the back, like so starved. The way that he was starved like, starved yeah. for affection, this poor child. Right. Anyway, Paul ends it with talking about the story about um, Shane and Vincent, like Shane had pitched Vince an idea and like Vince is like, like they get into it and he's like over my dead body here here and he like opens his chest he goes and like gives him a knife or something and is yeah, like Vince just was eating um apparently yeah. and he hands uh shane a knife and it's like oh like right here go ahead if uh, he's like that is never gonna happen while i'm still alive so if so, you want it that badly go ahead right here and then he goes on to say the craziest thing and he's like and he's like and if you're not man enough to p stick it right here i'll take that into consideration as well and like you're like that's crazy like that that so is do you like nuts like what 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 is he supposed to do with that his father is literally telling him to stab him uh for, to get an idea over or whatever or and if he doesn't do it then he's not man enough like that's Girl. that's Dark. no wonder like no Scary. wonder and again this is a meeting of creatives so we there were like paul was there so bruce was there pat was there like there were people witnessing this right 
so I, and that's one instance of something completely insane. So I'm like, I'm just saying like, I know y'all know what you know. Right. Whatever. So crazy. And then the last episode is called The Finish. Um, It gets into a lot of uh Donald Trump and Vince being compadres, which of course I'm not yeah. shocked. I'm not even going to even say anything about it. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. I mean, Linda had a position in his cabinet and then they sent Hulk Hogan to go speak at the Republican National Convention this year. Which so it's they we know. Vince or Trump is a. I, and they even say it. I was like the the like pro wrestlification of like politics. I was like, no, yeah, that's that's what it is. This the, and honestly, what he does is a pro wrestling playbook. Like that is it. Like that there is no if ands or buts about it. He's out here doing wrestling promos. No, and it's crazy when they put it. I I actually loved that they did that because I was like, that is fascinating. Everything's yeah. wrestling. Everything is wrestling. Everything is wrestling. I was like, that is when you put it like that. And he was, they were putting like heel speech, like promos next to things like Donald Trump actually said. And I was like, yeah, oh my God. Was like, that's wait. why like, I can't take any of it. Like, serious. I'm just like, I've heard this. I've, 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 I've seen this. this. I've lived. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. No, period. Um, also, um, they ask him even something about, uh, cause I, I really took like basic ass notes, but uh, saying, um, he didn't feel bad. They were talking about like the premature deaths of wrestlers and why they were mm -hmm. all dying so young and and la la la. And literally Vince was like, I don't feel bad about anything because they took those drugs recreationally for fun. And I was like, that is so far from the truth. Like, I'm not so too far, far from the truth. From like, the I'm truth. sure some people took drugs recreationally. They're taking drugs. And you guys know this, but they're taking drugs because they are afraid to not work, that they'll lose their spot. They are working through excruciating pain, through injuries, so they don't lose their job. So they're taking somas, they're taking like muscle relaxants, they're taking steroids, they're taking all kinds of shit so that they can work, not so they can party and have a good time, even though I'm sure there was an element of that. Right. Saying you don't feel bad at all because it was just they were just recreational la di da is psycho. You psycho. are delusional if you and I know you don't think that's true again because you already said you just say shit you don't mean. Right. But that is crazy. Right. Yeah. The, the it's the what's well, the complete like just lack of like the flippant lack of responsibility for anything that goes on in his own company. It's just so crazy. It's just like. Uh, what like these people work for you they like yes they they and it's not even like it's not like a normal job where they work for you nine to five like five to, they work for you 365 yeah. you, they yeah. travel the world for you they leave their families for you like that's crazy and like to just be like oh i i hope I, I i believe at one point he goes i have i carry zero responsibility zero and you're like none no, you don't feel anything you yeah and what's the gag about that is that it's so contradictory because it's like okay you are saying you are the man you are in control you are the the powerful dynamic in this company and yet you have you were like no i don't know anything about that that was recreational mm -hmm. like you actually had no control over the situation like the contradictory nature of it again is like I am manipulating this story to however it will benefit me. Like in right. one minute, I'm the one that's in control of everything. I know about everything. I am the overseer. I know what's happening. And then right. the other thing is I had no control over that it's recreational silly right. goose. Not but like and, and, that, and that, that's that is just typically what it is. It's like when yeah. when things are going great, I did that. I made that decision. I was it was my idea. Blah, blah, blah. Shit hits the fan it's it's plausible deniability oh i don't know like they were doing what they were doing on their own time and blah 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 i'm like okay sure sure right do not yeah. pretend like you are not like the micromanager like supreme and have no idea what's going on with these people don't yeah don't You're... don't what is that again willful ignorance my least favorite type um also it was super weird to me and again this these interviews a lot of them took place before the sexual allegations came out although again it's like i know that a lot of you know so it makes it like extra uncomfortable um how almost 
every single wrestler, this was another one of those like hard cuts of everyone saying that Vince was like a father figure to them, mm-hmm. but he couldn't even be a father figure to his own actual son. Correct. His own actual, because they, the way they did is they did the Shane storyline about how Shane is like literally starved for affection from his father. And then they li- did this right after. It was so smart. And they're literally like, Vince is like, yeah, no, he's like a father figure to me. I would consider Vince a father figure to me. Vince, wow, he did so much for me. He's basically like a father figure to me. And it's like, first of all, we need a new generation of fathers if that's the case, because right. it's really making me, it, I'm t- that's your north the, star jesus jesus my god <laughs> father good fathers please step up and sound off i am so tired i am so, so exhausted tired. i really need, and i know they're out there but my god mm-hmm. we need some help out here jesus lord because the way that he's not even a father to his own son and you're all watching it play out in real time and then claiming that this man is your father figure is actually really upsetting to me like right really upset you are wrestling alongside his own son who is jumping off of like 50 foot high whatever's to please his dad and you're like vince was basically my dad right y'all need a therapist a psychiatrist and a new lease on life i'm right. so sorry and i i'm not, i don't say that disrespectfully because i i can't imagine that era and working in that era i really i mean this with the most respect that is crazy that is crazy and i I I am curious to see what happens in the aftermath of this documentary, like, really, because people are going to see that, the people mm-hmm. who did it, and are going to be like, oh, okay, well, I said that, and maybe right. I felt that, I actually felt that way, or maybe I didn't, but I have to reckon with the fact that I said it and what the outcome right. is for me. Mm-hmm. Whatever. Also, I wrote in all caps, mustache, OMSG, because when oh, Vince, Vince does that interview- uh, He really, like- like looks evil like he he really evil. like like all of these things like started happening and then all of a sudden he looked like a cartoon villain like and we we're just like the dye job the skinny mustache the fact that like no you know he's aging like milk and it's just <laughs> <laughs> like, i was yeah it's bad so so scary um and that's when they kind of get into the janelle grant lawsuit which we've talked about before um, but the Janelle Grant lawsuit came up. It is extremely disturbing. I'm sure Very all of graphic. you guys know yeah. about it. It's extremely graphic. I remember Xavier was reading me the text and I, I was floored. And even, uh, Schumacher says, he goes, you know, I, I knew that there were a lot of skeletons in that closet. And so I was expecting the worst. And even I was shocked, right? Shocked. And there was a woman from, she might've been from the wall street journal also. I can't remember, but she was the one that got the lead and was like, I had the, she was, I actually knew for a fact that WWE did not see this coming at all. Like they yeah. had no idea that this was on the docket, that this was going to, going to be coming for them. And they had to really figure Heavy. it out mm-hmm. quick. Um, which as we know, I mean, is the WWE specialty, but this is like, I mean, right. God, it's... I God bless Janelle Grant. Seriously, like I, I really, I'm not a religious person, but <sighs> some, I, I don't even have the words for that. But then they talk about, um, I didn't know about this Ashley Massaro, and yeah. how that is, that chilled me also. Mm-hmm. So that she had come out with sexual assault allegations, nothing uh, ever while came on of it. tour, and like they just basically didn't. Be- didn't believe her didn't believe didn't, her didn't do anything about it didn't report it um and then basically we're like oh no we didn't know about that had we known we would have reported it and that's yeah so crazy and she killed herself yeah apparently allegedly there was the cause of death is apparent suicide like she mm-hmm. i just and again you hear all these stories about like again the other woman that got paid with the settlement janelle monet or uh janelle monet oh my god janelle grant mm-hmm. like all these things like Okay, so maybe we like I you know what I'm saying? It's like so there was definitely an element of truth there. Like you just Oh, 100%. I just, you you I, had to pay like Rita Marie, you had to pay four women in 2023 and now you're getting fuck, fucking federally investigated in 2024. Like maybe maybe the guy's a rapist. I don't know. Like maybe I, if like 400 women are coming out of the woodwork to be like, hey, this happened and has been happening, 
and like all of the we have so many examples to point out even if you just look at tv like look at it and, and like all of it's just under the guise of like oh like it's a character okay sure but you the man has to write approve and like plan out and put it on tv i was like mm -hmm. don't make you know what i mean like this like oh like this separation of like it's a character weak sauce vince weak sauce uh, nobody believes you nobody believes that as a plausible anything you make the decisions and carry them out you are responsible always you're the guy in your company you're mm -hmm. responsible for what happens in your company <laughs> like mm -hmm. again it's it's the it's the control thing. It's like, are you in control or aren't you in control? Because like, I just, you're trying to sell any story that just makes you like, not the villain when you are so obviously the villain It's even character. And you literally say like, you don't, it's, it's you, but like the dials turned up. So like, even if. Yeah. But even like, he goes and asks like what, there's a quote. He's like, what is the similarities between you and Mr. McMahon? And he goes, none whatsoever. Like, again, it's just. He tells on himself over and over again where it's like you are literally saying contradictory things. Yes. Within the same interview. Right. Within the same interview. It's so crazy. I just cannot even fathom how anyone takes anything he says seriously at this point. I just mm -hmm. can't even get there in my brain. And I know that like I don't have and you don't either. So I know that like that's fine. I don't have nostalgia goggles about him at all. Because yeah. I'm experiencing it at, at this stage in the game. So I am mm -hmm. seeing it all in 2020 vision, allegedly, like, mm -hmm. in hindsight, like, all of this stuff we're experiencing right. again. I don't have nostalgia goggles about him. I don't have to reckon with the fact that this person. But I'm just saying, like, even Mr. McMahon as a character, like, I know we're about to get into that. And I know that it's a lot of it is going to make me, like, really uncomfortable. And I know even then it would have also. I just right. know that. I just know that. Like, I'm sorry. And you can say it was a different time. It was a different whatever. And I know that, like, there was a lot of sexism on TV. There was a lot of crazy blood gore violence. But I just, I don't, I, there is no scenario I could ever picture myself enjoying watching something like that that is so overtly violent and, like, sexually... Sexually violent. Violent towards right. women. Mm -hmm. And even men. Like, I don't know. Everybody. It's just, right. like, I don't know. I, and so I, I don't feel that way where it's, like, he was pioneering television. Like, I know that WWE was very popular at the time, and I know that no, we're going to get into then, it. No, like, but even then, like, he very then... much so... And even then, this is, again, like, not taking responsibility. He's like, oh, well, we just followed the trends. Like, and you're like, oh, okay. Okay. Like, yeah. And the, right. But the thing is, like, that is a choice to do. Like, right. you don't have to. <laughs> no, you right. are. This is a free enterprise. You can't. You don't have to. <laughs> like, and I don't. I think Triple H is the one that says it. Like, who's worse, the guy that does it or the guy that enjoys it? Mm -hmm. And it is like really, like it. It makes you feel some type of way to watch the reaction from the crowd. Like how happy, excited, how much mm -hmm. they enjoy it, how much and. Obviously, their demographic was is like 90 something percent men, but there were women right. in the audience because mm -hmm. I was looking. I was like, I right. have to see what the women are doing in this audience. Mm -hmm. um, and again, I'm not trying to be on my soapbox or anything like that, but it's just like I. I just feel like I always say this, use the test to take the test. I think the answers are all right in front of you if you just look and some right. people just don't want to look again, willful ignorance. But um, I think it's interesting that the uh legacy question kind of towards the end they're all like what's vince mcmahon's legacy and, and everyone nobody sputtered. can answer everyone sputtered. and i said this uh to crystal when we were watching i was like part of me is like is it that moment of okay we're right now it's in this moment in the moment they're doing the documentary they're like okay we're supposed to be doing this documentary about vince there's no the the allegations haven't come out blah 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 I was like, so they're supposed to be saying like maybe sort of complimentary things about Vince because it's a Vince McMahon documentary. But I'm like, but do all of them know deep down that like maybe eventually the truth will out? Like, because they know some stuff. They've definitely heard some stuff. They whatever. Like, and they're hesitating like how to say. Well, there's it. been a lot. There's already. Well, like, right. There's, a, there's like, already Even stuff. up to like now, there's so many documented things that have happened. So it's not like.
you know, it, it's not like you don't know. Like, I don't know. It's it, it's weird. It's, but it, it's I, weird. I, I, I do find it very telling that like no nobody could come up with had an answer. A, yeah. Um, even even Vince because it's have an so it, because it's so complicated because it's like, again, it's that thing where it's like, yes, he gave us this thing that we all super love and enjoy. But he's terrible. Like, and like, mm -hmm. and what, you know what I mean? When you're talking about like a legacy, like what you can't ignore either. Do you know right. what I mean? Mm -hmm. So It's so true. And I do, before I forget, because I voice memoed Xavier this morning about this, before I forget, I definitely want to mention this. Oh, sorry. I'm smacking things. Um, I literally, again, watched this until like three o'clock in the morning. And then my first thought when I woke up this morning was, wait a minute. So, because Brock Lesnar is allegedly implicated in the documents concerning uh, Janelle. Janelle Grant. Mm -hmm. Janelle Grant. And where basically she was a part of the of him re-signing the contract. Where it was like, if he re-signs his contract with WWE, he can have his way with this her whenever. This is the human trafficking part of the human trafficking lawsuit. Correct. And Brock Lesnar is allegedly the person that they are discussing. Mm -hmm. And I made the connection this morning and I don't know why I didn't last night, but literally I woke up and I was like, oh my God, wait a minute. My eye just started twitching, by the way. Um, <laughs> I was like, Undertaker had the WWE WrestleMania winning streak of like 20, wasn't like 21 WrestleMania. 21, yeah. He had been undefeated. And the day of that he was supposed to fight Brock Lesnar, the day of, Vince calls him and is like, oh, by the way, just kidding. We're going to put Brock over tonight mm -hmm. and you're going to lose to Brock Lesnar. And I was like, I don't know. I literally said to him, was like, something is fishy about that. I don't know like, if it that has anything to do with anything. I, think I know, might but really it's just reaching. But, um, but it's not reaching. I'm just saying, like, obviously there was something there. There's definitely I don't know if it was like a camaraderie or if it's like a like Vince was like, yeah, like there's something about this guy. And I'm saying maybe if Brock Lesnar is somehow involved in this, like I could see I could see it is all I'm saying is mm -hmm. like special privileges oh well yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. that's well, what i'm saying well and the thing is like he the the whole like janelle being like dangled was a uh, part of his like trying to get the wwe was trying to get them to trying to get brock to re-sign for another right. x amount of years right, which right, is just right. uh absolutely insane and then mind you like hold like i don't know if they hold on brock lesnar was married to sable like Yep. Uh, I'm I am checking right now. Uh, yeah, because I you texted me that this morning and I was like, "Excuse me." Yeah, they're he still was. together. They are still together. Girl, no. when did they get married? In two thousand six. No. So it had to have been uh during her second return run uh because Lesnar premiered in two thousand. He came in at like 2002 um, and then was there until like 2004 or five leaves, doesn't come back for another like 10 years, does his UFC thing and then comes back. But yeah, they're still married. Like this is still still going that on. So crazy. That is so crazy. Right. Um, But the the series ends with uh basically Ben saying like, oh, I don't know, like. Sometimes I don't know, like, which is the character and which is me. Which is crazy because you just said which there was is... no, no uh, but, difference. But, but... There, there, are, there is no similarities whatsoever, quote, end quote. I feel so many things. I literally, you guys are so lucky I didn't just come in here with, like, a cigarette and a, st a stiff drink. I was suffering Honestly. today. I was literally, like. Reeling, reeling. You're that uh -huh. um, Ben Affleck uh, meme of him like smoking the cigarette outside, just like that. And again, once again, I've been him many times. I am Charlie from It's Always Sunny with the the red lines and the <laughs> and the cigarette, yeah. just like. But if if Brock wanted him to get over in, like, I'm going mm -hmm. crazy. Like, literally, my dreams were make were making connections I couldn't in my waking reality. And I got like I texted Xavier today too because. Um, like I said, my roommate had watched the whole thing with me and she texts me in the middle of the day and goes, 
Vince McMahon is haunting me today. And I go, Mama, he's haunting me. He's haunting, he's us haunting all. me today. And I wasn't even there. I that's what I'm saying. Like I I'm so curious in a in a morbid way and i know that it's sick and twisted like what the fallout is going to be from this from mm -hmm. this from the the investigation from everything because like what other like this these are horrible skeletons and it makes me always wonder about the ones that are buried under those like when you pull those skeletons out what, what else falls? is there right like i am so it just and i hate that and i understand like how people feel like again ignorance is bliss and like sometimes you just don't want to see behind the curtain but it's because it 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 makes me question things because also then I'm doing the psycho thing where I'm being a conspiracy theorist and I'm like, okay, but like, did they just show us this because they're like, okay, this is the evil man that now we're like removing and like WWE is going to like right go into this new era and it's going to be better and and everything has been good since he left and la 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 because there was also that part where they were asking, like they asked Hulk and they asked whoever like, oh, do you think that the WWE will still be intact if Vince McMahon were to ever leave? And, and so many of them were like, no, there's no way. Vince and McMahon, it's the, and it's thriving. And it's thriving. It's, it's it is quite literally doing better than it ever, ever has. has. Uh, WrestleMania, they mentioned WrestleMania 40 was the biggest WrestleMania they have ever had. And and by every measure, by every, every measure, metric, ticket sales, and like merch, ratings, yes. merch, all of it. So it's just, this is really crazy to come off of especially the same year as wrestlemania 40 for this documentary to come out while there is this humongous regime change sort right. of because no, also very much so you know it's it's it just leaves so many more questions i'm so curious as to what's going to happen because it, if anything i've learned in this life and the truth will out. I mean, maybe not always, but a lot of the time, and especially mm -hmm. when you're a big corporate company like this, a big face like this, where you have advertised your life on television for so many years, you can't imagine. Like, of course, people were going to take a second look and be like, this is kind of weird. Like, right. something is up here. Right. And I am just so curious as to how this is going to go. Um and yeah, like, please, like, if you guys watch, let us know your thoughts. I'm so please, curious please, what other please, people yeah. are going to say. I'm going to be on the these these internets going crazy. Amen. Amen. And and if you guys, um, again, if you want us to deep dive, we will, because I definitely will. There's a lot more I feel like I have to say. Do you have any? Well, not today. But do you have any final comments, final remarks? Oh, well, this was certainly a ride and a half. I'm I am thankful that we that you at least had a little bit of a, a background before yeah, um, getting into all of this because that would have been truly Hard. insane. Um, to I would. I don't know what I would have done. If yeah. I found out about the steroid trials, Chris Benoit, the, the Owen. Montreal Screwjob, <laughs> Owen, all in one. Oh my God. The, when I you don't list know them, you're like, it. wow, there's a lot of really big Material. red flags here. The sexual allegations, Sable, Janelle, Rita, like... Right. Uh, I don't know if I would have made it. I'll be honest. Very true. Even Very true. finding out about Stephanie and Shane, their storylines, the McMahon family. Crazy. Again, I'm kind of glad I have a a, a cushion of info to move mm -hmm. forward with because otherwise I don't know if I would have made it. But yeah, I'm agree. I'm very mm -hmm. grateful for uh, your education. But oh, yeah, so again, let us know your thoughts. Uh, we love you all so much. Thank you for taking this journey with us. It was the doozy. We love you all. Um, and we'll see you on the next one. See you next time. Bye. Bye.